Turn your cell phones off. Turn to Ephesians 6, Ephesians 1, Ezekiel 33. In that order. Ephesians 6, I have it up on the screen, but I want you to follow with me. I'm not going to preach so much. I'm going to teach you something that God um, taught me over the course of me being a grown-up. I grew up in church, but I grew up under authority of my parents. I grew up under the authority of pastors who preached the Word of God, believed the Word of God. And there were things that, you know, I knew the devil was trying to bring into my life that should not be there. With some, it didn't work. With some things, it did. I did not grow up unscathed by sin. God protected me from certain things, but He let some things in. He did it for a reason. So, then as a grown-up, I am learning then that God uses me as an authority over people's lives. One day, not too long after I became pastor here, and it was a, I, I won't go into it, it was a bad time here, awful time. And God really dealt very harshly with me at that time. And about a year into it, there was just things going on that I was just under a lot of, I could tell it was very demonic, very satanic oppression. I used to have a place here where I'd go and hide and, and pray, and it was behind the baptistry. I don't mind telling you that now, because that's not the place anymore. <laughs> you won't find me there. But I was back there praying one time, and what, was, what I was getting, in, and it's, if you've ever had devils speak to you, you don't hear them in your ear, you hear them in your soul, because that's where they're going to talk to you. And they was saying, get out, leave, leave, get out, run. Leave church, leave your family, get out, get out of the way. And I was back there, I was bawling my eyes out. And I said, God, I don't, I've never felt this before, I don't know what this is. And the Holy Ghost, He'll always quote scripture to you when it's Him. And what He said was, smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. And it dawned on me at that time that I was not the intended target. The target was my wife, my children who were young, and this church. That was the target. And when I realized that, I, did, I stood up. I literally stood up. And I said, not now. It's not going to happen. And that oppression left. And that started things in working in my mind. The day before I preached my granddaughter's funeral, I left the church here, went home, and I had this strange impulse. I told my wife, I'm coming home. She said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to go down the woods and cut a tree down. She didn't say nothing. So I went, got an axe, and I went down in the woods, and I was looking for these old dead trees. 
thought, I'm not going to chop a live tree down. And I didn't know what I was doing, but as I started chopping this tree, I realized that I was just getting stuff out of me that was there. And I remember beating on this tree, chopping it down, and I started saying things to God. And it's just between me and God. What I said, I've never told anybody. What came, stuff just came out of me. So I'm standing there, and I'm just, the tree fell, and I'm just heaving, just breathing like this, holding that axe. And I hear a noise over in the woods. I'm down in the woods just a little bit, and I hear a noise over there. Now, this is January, February, somewhere, I think it's January. See, all the leaves are down, and I've been in the woods enough to know during that time of year, it's probably a stupid squirrel, because you're out deer hunting, and you hear, ch -ch -ch -ch, and you get your rifle up because you're going you're to blast this buck, and it's a stupid squirrel. Well, I looked over there, and coming toward me in the woods was a pit bull. Those things are satanic. They're evil. They're very dangerous dogs. Very dangerous. They are designed to kill people and animals. They are designed to do it. So this thing was coming toward me, and there was a, we have a barbed wire fence that separates our property from the woods, and this thing was coming, and it was coming my direction. And I lifted that axe up, and I squared up with that dog, because I'm going, I'm going to chop him. And when he came to that, he got to that fence, and I said... Go out of here! Huh! Like that. And that dog stopped, looked at me, and took off running the opposite direction. And I stood there, and God was telling me, Mike, those devils that are on you are beasts. And just like, see, God put it in that animal's heart to be afraid of men. Am I right? And when I spoke as a man, that dog was more afraid of me than I was of him. And he did not even come on our property. God's telling me all this. Mike, I've given you an area that's yours. A domain. And it's under your protection. Don't let the devils come in, Mike. Don't let them in. Because they will kill your family. They will kill your church. They'll kill everybody you love. And on that day, I told God. I said, God, I give you my granddaughter. And I trust you enough, God. You can have every member of my family. If you will take them in your arms and protect them. One of the hardest days of my life. But God showed me. God wanted me out in the woods to face off that pit bull. And I said this out loud. I said, that goes to the rest of you. And I was talking to all the spirits. You think I'm crazy? I'm telling you, this Bible's right and we'll read it to you. We are not wrestling flesh and blood. We are fighting spirits every single day. And they are vicious. They are beasts. They will kill, steal, and destroy everything that you have. Now, I'm preaching today to every man in this church and every man listening to me. I want every man listening to me. God places people under authority. Everybody, everybody is under authority of some kind. Keep your anarchy to yourself. Because I don't buy it, I don't believe it, I don't live it, and I don't want it, I don't want it in this church. 
You are, we are not sovereign citizens. We are under authority. And I will read it to you. Ephesians 6. Verse 12, I have it up on the screen. I want your Bibles open. I want every man listening to me because you're the first target. You're the first target, but you're not the intended target. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. These are devils. Powers. These are devils. Rulers of the darkness of this world. Those are devils. And then he says it right out against spiritual wickedness in high places. High places are where tops of authorities are. The Congress, the United States, actually sits on a hill. They call it Capitol Hill. It is a high place. It is where the, the governmental authority of our country exists. It is a high place. And I'm telling you, it's full of devils. Amen. But that does not make you exempt from the laws. We have written laws in this country. You are not exempt from them just because you think Congress is evil. You're not exempt. I'll read it to you. So any place where there's authority, there's going to be devils working in that. They're either going to work through it or they're going to work against it. To get it out of the way. There's wolves all around us. And dragons and serpents and pit bulls. Dangerous things. Now Ephesians 1. Verse 19. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? Underline that. The power men... The power that God gives you derives from Jesus Christ. See that? What the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe. According to the working of his mighty power. Is there a devil that's more powerful than Jesus? No. And they, they all know it except Lucifer. Because every devil that Jesus faced, they took off and ran. Get, out, get away from us, Jesus. We know who you are. You're the son of the most high God. Get away from us. What have we to do with thee? Lucifer's the only one. He don't get it yet. Okay. So uh, verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. See, Christ has even got power over death. He beat death. Raised him from the dead. Set him at his own right hand. Right hand is always the place of authority in the Bible. The right hand is where the strength is. In heavenly places. Far above. Christ is far above all principality. He's higher than every devil. Amen. And power and might and dominion. These are all types of devils. They're power devils, might dominions, might devils, dominion devils. They all go after where authority is. They either work through it or against it. And have put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now, I want to teach you the typology of the body. Your body is a picture of heaven and earth and hell. The head is heaven. It's where the spiritual place is. That, and that's where Christ is. He's up in heaven at the right hand of God and he's the head. The church is the body. Amen? And it's, we're down here in this earth. His spirit is is down here with us. That's why our lungs are in the body and not up in the head like fish have it, their gills up here. We, our lungs are down here with the body and so that's the Holy Ghost down here with the body. Okay? Now we get a little vulgar just for a minute but your butt is hell. It's corruption. It stinks. Amen. So you see what I'm talking about here. The, the whole thing here is, is a typology. Wives, listen to me. You are not the head. Your husband is. God put it that way. You don't like it, you take it up with the maker. I'm the messenger. Okay? Just like Christ is the head of the church. 
the, the, the church is not in charge. Christ is. And I'm going to show you where authority is. When you're under authority, you're under protection. Okay? Now, Colossians 1. Very quickly. Verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers. These are all types of devils. They are working either through authority or against authority. If, if someone in authority is evil, then those spirits are working through that person. How many of you know somebody that's really messed up, evil, bad, wicked? Okay, they have thrones and dominions and powers working through them. Your fight is not with them, it's the devils that control them. Okay, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, I mean Christ is eternal, and by him all things consist. And he is the head, he says it here again, he's the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that all, and in all things he might have the preeminence. Preeminence means he's in charge of everything. The, what the body does is controlled by the head. Amen? Now, take a look up here. I tried to get better pictures. This is about as good as I could get. I want you to think of you, your soul being the city. Or your family. Or this church being the city. The cities back then were walled. Why? Why? There was a constant threat that somebody was going to come in and take over the city. Constant. And that city always had watchmen up on those towers and up on those walls watching day and night. Protecting that city. If you lived in the city... You lived under the authority of whoever was in charge of that city, but you also lived under his protection. If you didn't like that, you took a chance and moved out, but you were always going to be at risk for being invaded. That's how it was back then. And that's how it still is in the spiritual realm. Do you understand that? The old days are still around in the spirit world. There is always a threat. The walls always have to be defended. And those of you who are under authority will be protected as long as you stay under that authority. Are you listening? Men, you're the protector. You're the one in charge. Do not give your authority over to any devil. They'll tear your family up. Let me read some verses to you. Let's pray. Father, my mind, you, you've, my, it's just so much in here, God, I want to get out. I want to help somebody today. God, there's some people, there's some men who need this. I needed it. God, you gave me a family. You gave me a church. And I'm responsible for these people. I got to watch for their souls. And I've seen what the devil has done to people, God. And it did it under my watch. Father, forgive me. Help me to be a man. 
help those who are under my authority remain so that they're protected. God, teach our men this. We need this. We, we, this is the most important thing, God, you've ever showed me. And we need this, Father. Some men need to hear this. Some wives need to hear this. Some children need to understand this as they grow up. So God, just teach us. You be the teacher today. You be the preacher. And just go work through me, Father, in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said. Uh, Psalm 31, 21. Blessed be the Lord, for he has showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. You are a strong city. Your soul is a strong city. Your family is a strong city. Your church, this church is a strong city. I want God to build strong cities in this church. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. That means they're close. And while they're close, there's protection there. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. And I'm telling every one of you men, if you think that you can do this without Christ, you're wrong. You will get defeated. You'll get, you'll get run over. I promise you, you are nothing to these devils. They'll destroy you in a heartbeat. They are more powerful than your flesh is. If you do not have the word of God and Christ in you, except God watch through you, you will lose everything that you've worked for. Your wife is going to eat up half of your stuff in the divorce settlement. Am I kidding? In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Your salvation is hinged on this. If God doesn't keep you, you're not saved. The devils will destroy you. And then they'll destroy your family. Ezekiel 33, turn there. Everybody turn in your Bible to Ezekiel 33. I called the, the videos that I started doing in 2009. God gave me the name for them. Watchman Video Broadcast. The things I'm saying... I'm, I'm putting out another video on aliens... If that's not your thing, I'm telling you they're real. They're devils. It's a form of devilry is what it is. And it is a, it is a, what I'm going to show today in this watchman, it'll knock your socks off. God has prepared me all my life to be teaching things like this. God has helped me see things. As a watchman on the wall, if I recognize the harm coming from a long distance away, it's better for me to warn the city far in advance, is it not? Than for me to wait and be nearsighted and not see them until they're at the door and then turn around and blow the horn. Nobody's prepared. Nobody knows what to do. But if I see it coming from a long way away and I warn the city, then we're prepared in advance. We're ready to go. We can load our guns, our ARs. Okay, we, if we see it coming years in advance, we can buy a lot of bullets. Thank God for Barack Obama teaching us to go buy as much bullets as we possibly can. That man sold more guns. And Hillary did too. Hillary scared us to death. Now watch this. Everybody read your Bible. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, you men are son of man. Every one of you men, you're a son of man. Speak to the children of thy people and say to them, when I bring, when I bring a sword upon the land, God is going to allow an attack. You know what he's doing to you? Teaching you how to fight. Covey, I found out you were in the army last night. I never knew that. They took you and taught you how to kill men. They trained him to be a killer. He went through police training. They trained him how to kill people. You don't like that? I don't care. There are bad people out there and they need to be shot. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of all this drugs. I'm sick of this crime. I've had it. 
Had it with the courts, letting all these people out. I'm sick of it. The enemies are real. And God will bring attacks. You men, listen. God will bring them. And he will let you get defeated. Won't he? Why did he do that? Because when you're training and you learn how the enemy comes at you and you get defeated, you stand back up and say, try that again. You've played video games, haven't you, David? How did, I don't know how I knew that. In a video game, in a shooter video game, when you start playing, you get shot the first 30 seconds of the game. They let you replay it. 30 seconds in, you might get shot again. They let you replay it. 30 seconds in, you know where that guy's coming from. You're going to shoot him. Is that right? That's training. Teaching you tactics. God is teaching you men how to fight by letting you get defeated. Did you know that? You know it now. Look at your Bible. When I bring the sword upon the land. Not if. When I bring the sword. If the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman. Ladies and children, your husband and your dad is the watchman of the house. You remain under his authority. You will be protected. You get out of that authority, you're on your own. If the people of the land take a man to their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he see the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. It's gonna be your fault. You went out of the authority of the watchman. You didn't listen. I cannot tell you the number of times I've preached messages directed at specific sins. And then people went out and did those sins. If I don't preach them, you commit the sins, you're still going to pay for it. I've got your blood on my hands. And I'm already dreading standing in front of God because I've got blood on my hands. Because there were people that I didn't warn. Verse 5, he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away to his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Men, you're the primary target. But only because you are standing in the way of what the enemy wants to do to your family and to this church. Now I'm going to say something. I am preaching to my family. First of all, Brother Sterling is a patriarch over the Leonard family. That man, he is an aged, wise elder. Look at that hair. That's wisdom coming out of him. The Bible says so. Even though my wife is my wife, she is still required by God's law to honor her father. Courtney, Lindsay, Christina, Alicia, all the grandchildren, they are to honor that man. 
He is the elder. You, in the Old Testament, when Moses needed help governing the people, he chose the elder men of all the heads of the families. And he said, those elder men are going to help judge and rule over the clans and over the tribes. And the Leonard family is to honor and respect this man. He's a godly man. He's helped build this church. He stood for this church when others left. He is a deacon in this church, a servant in this church. And when he sits in our board, we listen to this man. And listen to what he says. So in that sense, he has a double realm. He has authority in this church as an elder. But he has authority over his family. Now, God has shown me, Mike, you're a patriarch now. I'm fixing to have my 15th grandchild. That's called a litter. <laughs> my daughters and my sons are under my authority, even though they're adults. I have a responsibility to them to tell them, you're not doing right. To warn them. To protect them. Because I know what's out there. God's let me see it. And I'm here to warn my family, don't leave. Don't, don't go out. And if I have to come to you and say, you're not doing right. It's because I love you. And I'm watching over you. And I don't want to lose you. See, I have to preach to my wife. I don't say when I'm preaching to my wife. I would not do that. That's dangerous. It's rude. But I have to preach to my wife when I know she's not right. I have to preach to my family. I have been accused of allowing my family to live in sin. And I'm here to tell you, my daughters will tell you to your face, if I find out they're wrong, I go to them. And I've told them. And I've done things to members of my family. You would not believe what I've had to do to maintain the integrity over my family. I want to say it, but I'm not going to. You're under my charge. I'm watching over you. That includes my sons-in-laws. You have to respect that. Let me show you. Your soul, your family, your church. This is the, this is the city. Now, turn to Hebrews 13. God, help me preach this. I want every man listening to this. Hebrews 13. Do you believe the Bible? Do you believe the Bible? Anybody that knows me, my girls, when I'm really troubled and I, there's something wrong with me and you know it, what do I do? Who said I go hide? Do you know why? I don't want to say it. Because I'm afraid they'll get mad at me. And they'll turn around and leave. So I go pray about it. And what I'm saying to you is, I'm not a dictator. 
Don't just boss these girls. Kick them in the behind all the time. Be mean to them. I don't, I don't treat my people that way. But when I know something's wrong or when I think something's wrong, it bothers me and they'll see it. And I'll go hide. I'll be up there hiding. I won't even talk to anybody. And if God really gets at me, I have to take them and set them down. Hebrews 13, 17. Look at your Bible. Obey them that have the rule over you. Who does that apply to? Everybody. So, Mike, who's, who's, who's over you? My daddy's dead. My mama still gets at me. And I've had to listen to her. That's my mama. But I'm under. Thank you. That's a wise, that's a wise man there. He's pointing up. Do you believe that if I get out of line, God will whip me? Well, he has. And that's how I started out being pastor here. With the biggest whipping I've ever had in my life. I didn't think I was going to live through it. But I'm also under the authority of this Bible. What this Bible says, I have to go by. And if it scalds you, or it embarrasses you, or you say that I don't have authority over you, or whatever, I have to follow this Bible. Obey them that have the rule over you. And submit yourselves. Why? For they watch for your souls. Now here's what I'm telling you. Where there is authority, there is protection. Cubby wore a shield. That shield goes all the way back to the days of Rome when soldiers carried a shield. And they stood on the front line shielding the people in the city. I am sick of the police haters. I'm sick of it. That comes from a rebellious crowd who does not want authority telling them what to do. And a rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. They bear a shield. They're out there on the front line shooting killers. Getting dope heads off the streets. Getting... Marijuana junkies in jail where they belong. I don't care if they have a health card on it or not. That stuff is poison. Amen. I've had it. That shield is for our protection. Obey them that have the rule over you. For they watch for your souls as they that must give an account. Cubby's going to stand before God one day and give an account of every arrest that he made and the ones that he didn't make. I don't know the man. I don't know what his record was. But he probably was not perfect at being a cop. And he's going to stand before God one day and give an account. That movie about, uh, what was it? The, the shooter, the... Um, Oh, the, uh, the, the shooter guy we had over in Iraq. Yeah, the sniper. Chris Kyle. You know what he said to his psychologist? He said, I stand prepared to stand before my God one day and, and answer for every kill I made. That's a wise man. 
Because those are in authority. You listen to me. You're going to have to stand before God and give an account of those who were under your protection. And I'm not looking forward to that. That's being called into the office. Right? We're going to get called into the office. And we're going to get it chewed. So he said, they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. It's not healthy for me to be grieving all the time over what's going on in my family or what's going on in my church. That tears me up. God, God has made this place my life. And I give my life willingly for my wife, my family, my church. Everything that my wife will tell you. I spend hours studying, reading, thinking, working, preaching, teaching. For you. For you people online. You people online are as much under my authority because you call me pastor. And I believe that. So guys, you're going to have to give an account of how you did it and how you acted. So, turn to Psalm 91. Let me show you the protection that God offers. You stay under His authority. Wives, when you rebel under biblical authority, you rebel against God. It's plain and simple. I didn't make those rules. I have to say them like they're said. You have to, you have to find out from God whether it applies to you or not. It's not my business unless you're under my charge. Then it is my business. Psalm 91, verse 1. Are we learning something here? Is God helping us? That's what I'm hoping for. Men, you are a shield to your family. The men... John, stick your head in here. You know what he's doing? Ross, what's he doing out there? He's a shield. He's standing on that front door. He's armed. Sometimes it's Joe. Joe's a combat veteran. He'll shoot you dead. John may want to witness to you first, but then he'll, he'll take care of it. But Joe's out there, Joe will shoot you dead. You remain under that authority. God will protect you. See how it works? Verse, Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He's called the Almighty because He is more mighty than all the devils put together. And when you are under His shadow, He will protect you. This world is going to get invaded by falling angels who are kicked out of heaven. Do you believe that? You better. In that day, I believe God will shadow His believers and hide them as an eagle hovers over her nest, God said, I've protected my people. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. When I did something wrong, 
when I did something wrong. I went to God. Because I knew he would protect me. And he did. Even though I did something wrong, he protected me. Do you believe that? Even when I did wrong, I went to God. And God became my refuge and my fortress. Because I had the devil standing there accusing me. And he wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. He was saying, God, did you see what he did? You saw what he did? And I went running to God, and God went, you can't touch him. Woo! That's sweet. If my children did something wrong, and they came to me, Daddy, I did this, I'm sorry, Daddy. I had to do this to one of my kids. And I can never tell what it was. But I promised, I promised them I would protect them. Even when they did wrong. Even when I did wrong. I went running to God. I guess you can tell my heart's burdened with this. This is deep stuff. This is stuff that you're going to have to take and dwell on for a while. But we need it. This stuff I've taught years ago. And over the course of time, the devil ransacked people's lives and took them out. And they're not here anymore. You are. And some of you have been through exactly what I'm saying, haven't you? And some of you, I know about it. And this is why I'm preaching it, because God laid it on my heart for you, so you could understand. When you fail, your best, your best recourse is to go run to God and hide. Don't run from Him. Because if you run from Him, you run out from under His shadow. And you're not protected. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. See, the devil set up a trap for you, didn't he? Didn't he? He laid a trap for you. He set you up for this. He worked on this for years, didn't he? Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. Watch this, watch this. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. You know what his truth is? It's the Bible. The Bible is what protects you. Not me. It's the Bible. This is why you can go to 20 churches in this town and not find this Bible. They took it out. Once they got rid of it, Cubby, there was no protection for that pastor or that congregation. And devils moved right in and took over. This is good stuff. The Constitution. Why they try to get rid of it, Wayne? Same reason. Under the Constitution, there's protection. Let me tell you about the Apostle Paul. I was preaching this to the guys last night around the fire. 
Paul, the Jews hated him. And they were trying to hang him. They were trying to kill him. And they were about ready to execute him. And Paul said this to the soldier that was going to execute him. Will you execute a Roman citizen? And the soldier went, stop! Are you a Roman citizen? Yes, my daddy was a Greek. I'm under the authority of Rome. And the soldier said, everybody stand back! Stand back! Oh, you Jews, get back! This man is a Roman citizen, and he has a right to a Roman trial. Step away from him. There is authority in the Constitution, and there is protection in the Constitution. It's even protecting the stupid people. It's protecting the potheads. It's protecting those. And they hate the Constitution. They despise it. And it's the reason why they can come out and say whatever they want to say. And there's protection in this Bible. Which is why you didn't read it. Because the devil said, get away from that book. Here. Here's your favorite TV show. We're going we're gonna to binge watch it. You're going to watch 20 episodes. On Netflix. Here, watch YouTube. Watch the internet. Here, here's some porn for you. Look at some porn. Stay away from the Bible. They're going after you guys, aren't they? They don't want you under the authority of the shield and buckler of the King James Bible. Ephesians 5. Here's, here's, here's why I'm going to get in trouble now. I say that. God has worked all of this in me and my wife. You would not believe if I told you, which I'm never going to tell you, the conflicts that we've endured. Never going to tell it. Never going to say it. But God allowed those things to teach her and me our place, our role. I am built bigger than my wife. My frame is bigger. My muscle structure is bigger. Used to be. My, I'm taller than she is. I think more defensively than she does. When we go, you guys do this, don't you? When you go into a restaurant, sit down, you sit with your back to something so you can watch. Who does that? Instinctively. Instinctively, don't we? We weren't even trained. We just, as soon as we go into a restaurant, we're going. That's nuts, man. What are we, what are we scared of? Flying taco? Never know. So watch this. Here's, here's your protection, ladies. Wives, submit on yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. God did. You'd be mad at him. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be unto their own husbands in everything. How many things? Now, boys, listen. Guys, Listen, now it's your turn. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church. How many times did Jesus hit the church? Don't you ever raise a hand to your wife. Don't you ever. When King George went and set up an attack against his own colonies, Wayne, 
the colonies stood up and said, we're not going to take it. And they removed themselves, by the grace of God, from under the dominion of King George of England because he attacked his own people. You hit your wife. I hope she drags you to court and takes you for everything you've got. That's the least you deserve. Husbands, love your wives. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. You're to give for your wife. Offer yourself. You're to put yourself in harm's way. You're the one protecting that family. Aren't you? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Husbands, you're the spiritual head of the house as well. That means getting your Bible. You've been avoiding it. Can't avoid it any longer. At some point, you're going to have to give up and submit to the authority of Jesus Christ in your life. Romans 13. I told you I got a lot. Are you tired? I'm not. Romans 13. Let me read this. Let's see how much more I got. Genesis, Psalms, 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 Proverbs. Proverbs 30, verse 5, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. And that's the Bible. The authority of the Bible. Romans 13, I'll quit. Romans 13. I got all these Psalms for you. It's good stuff, but I'm going to let you out. Romans 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Sheriff's department has authority. Governor has authority. President has authority. Do you know why they're wanting to impeach him so bad? Because he won't give in to them. He's exposing them. He won't give in to them. He says, you don't own me. You might have owned Obama. You might have owned Hillary. You might have owned Bush. You don't own me. And they are trying to string him up for it. Now, I don't like the man as a man. But I stand on the same side of many of the issues that he stands for. He is the president. I honored Obama by praying for him every day that he was in office. And I'm glad he's not in office anymore. Amen. But he's the president. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there's no power but of God. Do you believe your Bible? Do you believe your Bible? Who puts them in charge? Who would have put Hillary in charge? God would have. And we probably would have deserved it. But whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. You see what I said? When you rebel against authority, I don't care who it is. I don't care if he's a school teacher. You go against God's word and now you're outside of the protection of God. They that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Is this Bible right? For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. So if they pull me over and ask me, can we search through your car? Sure, go ahead. Why would I do that? Because I'm not carrying drugs. And my car, yeah, my car doesn't have empty McDonald's wrappers all over it. You can search my car, officer. Go ahead. I got pulled over a couple months ago, and they told me to do this. So I gave them my license and my concealed carry card. State trooper, Missouri State trooper. You know what he said? Thank you for that, sir. Where is your weapon? I said, it's in my backpack. He said, just leave it there. You're good. Appreciate you telling me. He was not a terror to me. He did not say, get out of the car. I'm going to shoot you dead if you go for that backpack. He did not tell me that. I was not a threat to him, and he knew it. So these cops are seasoned. They can tell 
you can say, oh, they're, they're, what do they call it? When they see people they know is carrying drugs. Profiling. Oh, they're profiling us. Listen, they're not stupid. They know that if there's five, six people riding around a car at one o'clock in the morning, there's drugs in that car. Right? They're not a terror to good works. Only if you're riding dirty do you got to worry. Lindsay rear-ended a guy when she was still young. And the cop came. First thing he said is, let me see your phone. Didn't he? What was he looking for? See if she was texting when she hit that guy. And that guy, there must have been something wrong with that guy because he was mad because he had to wait for the cop. I pulled up there and I said, we're going to wait for the police. You can leave if you want, but my daughter's staying here for the cop. When the cop pulled up, that guy got out of his car like that and went to the cop like that. And the cop come out and he said, get in your car. Don't you ever, don't you ever approach an officer that way. Had his hand right here. This Bible is right. Keep your anarchy to yourself. It does not belong in this church. Rebellion is witchcraft in God's sight. Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Without, I already read that. For he is the minister. Cops are ministers of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. He, will, he has the authority to shoot you dead. He is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Does it not, you listen to me now and I'm going to let you go. Does not your conscience bother you? Is it not bothering you during this sermon? It should be. It should be. If your conscience has not already been seared with a hot iron, your conscience should be bothering you because you know you have rebelled against authority. Men, women, children, church members. We, in this church, follow these rules. If that's not for you, Go find another church. But this is what we follow. Are we in agreement on that? I've had people come to me privately. Mike, I need to talk to you. Did you do such and such? Did you say this yeah I did and I'm very sorry I've had that happen they did it out of love they did it out of respect I've had to do the same with people I've had to sit down and say did you do this yes I want repentance because then God will restore you and there will be joy I want us to bow our heads, okay? Man, my heart is so burdened. I've said so many things this morning. I've probably told you things I probably shouldn't have said. My family is one of the most important things to me. And I know that my family has done things that are wrong. And I believe that each one of them has gone to God or will and asked for God's forgiveness. And if such is the case, then it's done. It's over with. I want my family, my daughters, my sons, my daughter-in-law, my sons-in-law. To be respectful 
of the position that God has put me in over your soul. So I'm preaching to my family first. And then I preach to the rest of you. I'm your pastor. You've chosen that. If you are a member of this church, there's certain guidelines and certain rules that must be followed. If you commit a sin, it has to be dealt with. And I'm going to say something to everybody here with your head bowed. Somebody in this church called out for me to come and see them about a sin. And I came to them and we prayed and God forgave. And they have been restored. And nobody else in the world needs to know about it. And I was so happy that they did that. And I was not a terror to them. I didn't come down on them. I said, listen, I know what you're going through. I know what it's like. And I love you. And I'm so glad you reached out to me. Let's pray and let's ask God to forgive. And God did. And I don't think I have to know you. I don't think you have to come and tell me all your dirty sins. I don't think I can handle it. But it's okay if something's bothering you and you want to come to me and say, Pastor, I need my pastor. I did wrong. And I want to be right because I can't stop. I think that's the thing to do. Because when I got in trouble, I ran to God. And he helped me. And that's what we do in the kingdom of God. That's what we do. Father in heaven, this is probably the hardest things I've ever had to say here. And Father, I love you so much. I love your ways. Your ways are so holy and right. And they're so full of love. There's so much love in your authority over us. Even when we do wrong, Father, we run right and we get under your wings and you protect us from the devils. And that's the way you made it. That's your kingdom. That's the love of God. Father, I pray for every man listening to me today. Fill them with manhood, godly manhood. Men that are not afraid of their own sins. Men that are not afraid to run to you. Men that are not afraid to deal with their own lives. Men that stand and protect their wives and their children. Men that are protecting this church. Not just from the parking lot, spiritually protecting this church. Brother Sterling, Brother John, our deacons, the men on our board, we entrust them with wisdom and guidance to guide this church. They stand and protect this place from the spirits that would tear us apart. Father, help us all to submit to your authority and not be like Saul. Not be like Samson, have our power cut off. <coughs> Quit us like men. Help us all, dear God, to submit to your loving authority. Father, I thank you, Lord, for speaking to my heart in this message. I pray, dear God, that you would speak to my family, that you would speak to Brother Sterling's family, all the men, God, you deal with each and every one as you see fit, those that, that are online, those that are part of our church with us, God, that you would help each man to submit to your authority, each wife to submit to your authority, and live under your protection. The days are getting more evil. 
and the devils are all around us. And Father, we just ask for your protection. Thank you, Lord, for dealing with us and for convicting us of our sins. We humbly come before you today admitting we've done wrong. Thank you for your forgiveness and your love for us. Watch over us, we pray in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. if you're glad you came to church today, would you stand? Because then I'll let you go. There's a lot of things here. When we get this sermon put online, I want you to go back and listen to it. I want you to share it with somebody. How about that? Amen. This sermon needs to be out. People need to hear it. Okay? Brother Joe Huddleston, I love you. Thank you for your service to your country and your church. Would you dismiss us in prayer, please?